G'day, I'm going to uh, talk about some of the sound design tricks that you can get away with on the MPC. The MPC Live is really considered a great utility for composing and arranging, but sound design maybe isn't its forte. Some people might say that an instrument like the Octatrack is better for sample mangling and sound design. That's probably true, but there is a lot of power in the MPC and there are certainly things you can push it towards with just a little bit of extra effort and maybe digging down a little bit deeper. So let me tell you what I'm trying to achieve here. One of the secrets to good sound design is, of course, layering. So I'm going to head over to the program edit mode and first thing I'm going to do is tab over to the LFO modulation. Now you, here we've got uh, in this layer option, of course everybody knows this, you've got velocity as a, as a possibility but also random and cycle. Random is a, actually quite a powerful tool, that's what I want to focus on. But for the time being I'm going to leave it back on velocity, just cover some basic things. On the second page of the samples tab we've got access to level on the far right hand side. We move the Q-Link over to there and we, we can now adjust those levels accordingly. That's important because there's no solo button for levels in program edit in the live. So instead of soloing you can turn all the other ones down and then so if I hit my pad I'm just going to hear that second layer only. There it is. Now I'm using funny sounds today. I have a collection of what you might call foley which is just bits and pieces that I've collected from around my house and I make a large collection over these over the years and I cut them all up and pull them over into my MPC. I can make use of them as I please. Now at this stage I'm going to turn all the levels back up because I've trialled these sounds and I know what I'm in for. I can go back to my LF modulation, put it on random, go back to sample. Now if I hit the pad I get randomised selection between the four layers one of the four is going to play in a random order. Now so far that's pretty basic MPC Live technique. If I go over to Master though you'll notice that there's this thing called Simultaneous Play three quarters of the way down and you've got the option to turn on other pads to sound as I play the first pad. Now AO1 is pad 1. If I set it to AO2 while I strike pad 1, pad 2 will also play. And you can prove that if I go to the mixer and I hit pad 1, you can see there pad 2 is also sounding at the same time. And indeed, if I go back to my program edit, I can set up four other pads to play at the same time. Now if I hit pad 1, I'm effectively sounding five pads at once all of which have up to four samples assigned. Now I have already gone ahead and put samples on each layer on each of these pads and I have actually also set those layers to randomize. So on each of these pads I've got one of four sounds happening randomly which means that when I actually hit pad one, pad two, three and four and five are also going to sound but not only they're going to sound but in, in each of those pads you've got a random selection of four samples. This can give you complex randomization. I'll show you what I mean. Or I haven't actually put a lot of effort into selecting this sample. So it's not my best work, but you get the idea. Now if I head over back over to the pad mixer and I hit pad one, you'll see all of those pads sounding on. There you go, pad one, pad two, pad three, pad four, and pad five, all sounding. Now I've also set up the same thing for pad five. When I strike pad five, I'm going to hear pad six, pad seven, pad eight, and just for the sake of it, I've also added pad one in there. I'll show you what I mean. And each time I hit that pad, I get a slightly different sound because it's a randomized combination of folly sounds happening at once. Now you can really refine this. You don't have to have four sounds occurring at the same time. You can limit that. And of course you don't need all five pads sounding at the same time. You can have less than that if you wish, uh, but it opens up some power in terms of randomized sound design. Another trick that I use, I get a kind of a, a granular effect by 
really uh, pushing the warp way past where it needs to be. Actually, I've got it stretched all the way over to 346%, which gives you all sorts of artifacts. Uh, it sounds crazy. And the, the granular effect is not built into the sample. I've actually got it by stretching the sample. You can stretch it all the way to 400%. Totally crazy. And if you pitch down, you can get it doing something else. Or pitch it up. You can even uh, assign your LFO to pitch, uh, and that'll that'll give you a, a real, real wonky granular effect. Uh, I won't do it right now, but you get the idea. And if that's chewing up too much CPU, you just flatten the pad. So just one more time, I'll put all those back on. You've got a randomized effect, which can give you quite a complex sound without having to actually spend much effort. So it's not on par with an, an ensemble in Reactor which has been specifically coded to do something like this, you know, something like S layer. But it means that you're able to do a little bit of your sound design directly uh, in the MPC Live, uh, which is useful because it doesn't uh, interrupt your composing flow. Okay, so this is just one sound design tip of a number that I want to put on video for you. I'll do that over the next couple of months, hopefully. Uh, I hope you uh, can make use of this. Thanks.